Hello there and welcome to part 6 of this tutorial series in which we continue scraping tweets from Twitter, this time using this search option that Twitter provides. Now, if we are to use this option and search for Python programming, there are certain results that we get back, but we would like to automate this and actually um, get these results back using Python. So for that reason, we're going to create a separate function, search tweets based on a certain keyword. So we have a keyword that we provide and we would like this function to return the tweets related to that keyword. And if you remember from the previous tutorial, we had this part here for a for loop that was actually going through a user timeline and then was getting all the tweets that were there using this tweetpy.cursor. This function would not be that much different except instead of going through a user timeline, we would be going to api.search. So we will be using this search option. And of course, we do not need a certain username. Instead, we need a query, which would be equal to the keyword that we would like to use to access the tweets. And let's start with 10 tweets. I would like to point out that there is one thing in particular related to extracting the text that causes some issues and I would like to cover that first because if you are using the content, the tweet content, then you need to have this in mind and adjust for it as early as possible. So let's see what is actually the issue and how we can solve it. Let's print the length of the tweet full text. Since we're using this tweet mode extended, we should be able to extract the full text, right? At least that should be the case. And then let's print the tweet dot full text. So search tweets Python programming. And let's see what we get as a result. So we have 302 characters. Then we have the full tweet, perfectly fine. Then we have 125, looks, looks acceptable. 111, that's fine, 140, but now if you take a look at this one, it ends with three dots, which means that this tweet is not complete. So we have not extracted the full text. If we scroll below, we see another one at, two, at 140, again, not complete. Then if we scroll, we see another one at 140 and another one and another one, and all of these are not completed. So what is the reason for this? Basically, when we're using this API search, although we're using this tweet mode extended, when it comes to retweets, and again, it's good to point that all of these 140 cap tweets were actually retweets. So you see, it starts with RT and then at RT and then at, and these are all incomplete. The point is that it is not accessing the original tweet, but the retweet, and then it doesn't get the full, the full content. So one way, and in my opinion, the easiest way to solve this is whenever we have a retweet, let's just go back to the original tweet. We don't really need to, I mean, there is no difference between the original and this retweet, except for this RT and then at, at the beginning. So what we're going to do now is if tweet.fulltext.starts starts with RT at which means if it's a retweet, then the text would be equal to tweet.retweeted dot underscore status dot full text. What this does is it actually takes the retweeted status that is this tweet related to, and then it extracts the full text from the retweeted status from, from the original tweet. And then let's print length of this now new text or the full text that we've extracted and then let's print the text now if the tweet that we've accessed is not a retweet else let's print actually this is fine so we can just use the same as we had before so the length and the tweet itself so i've used here text and not full text just so we have a, a bit of a different wording but you can use the full text as well um, but basically what we're doing is if we're facing a retweet we are grabbing the original text the original tweet 
And if it's not, then it's perfectly fine to use because that's basically the full text or the original tweet. Now let's see if this makes it a bit better. So 300, then we have the tweet, 279, then we have the tweet. Now what we're missing is of course that we do not know which of these tweets are retweets, right? These are all, it seems that all of them are original and that would not be correct because I'm quite sure that, for example, this one, 273, and this one is exactly the same tweet, just being retweeted by two different Twitter users. But in any case, if you want to solve that, then it's fairly easy. And once you have this, you can always just add RT and then add the user and then add the Twitter, the tweet content. So you can kind of create the retweet your own way. If that's something that adds value, I don't think that this necessarily adds value when you're analyzing the tweet itself. So when it comes to the sentiment, it would not be that uh, that different. So you can maybe it's even better to leave it out. Um, and this search tweet option is actually very useful even when it comes to to trading. A lot of people I've noticed that uses that to assess the sentiment of the Twitter users towards a certain company. So. How often are they tweeting about it? Is it more often than before or less often? Is it positive tweets? So is the content positive or maybe not? Um, and how is that changing over time? So maybe there are less tweets, but they're more positive or the other way around. So combining all this information could be that you get to some meaningful insights. But if you, if you want to um, test this out, for example, at Today, as I'm recording this, there's a football match. After the football match, it's a, it's a nice case that you can run this, search for a certain club that has been playing in the match and see whether those tweets are positive or negative. And then maybe compare the tweets for the winning team, comparing the, ones, the one to the losing team and see if there's any significant difference. But it's just a simple case that because going through the, the code is one thing, but finding use cases is something that would make you a better programmer. And actually that's when you actually learn the most. So try to find use cases, even if it's something um, as simple as this with like 10, 10 lines of code. If you find a use case and make some conclusion out of that, that's the most important part. So thank you for following until the end. In the next one, we are going to focus on live streaming of tweets. And of course, you can analyze the tweets uh, in real time as well. So that would be all and I'll see you in the next video.